Are you ready? I'm ready. The sci-fi version of Apocalypse Now is a fine idea, but Ad Astra takes the perfectly decent premise of an otherwise fun space adventure, then sits down next to it with a handful of thick, creamy, slow-moving profundity and just starts smearing. Brad Pitt plays Roy, an astronaut in the near future who must travel to the bitter climes of Neptune to find his thought-lost father, Cliff, played by Tommy Lee Jones, who may or may not have an antimatter widget that's threatening the fate of the solar system. Spacecom believes my father is responsible. Roy traverses increasingly hostile territory while contemplating what might have happened to his father's mind and what might be happening to his own. On his journey, he encounters a lot of his own Terrence Malick-like voiceover, some of the most amazing space photography in a film by Interstellar's Hoyt Van Hoytema, and a near insufferable tone of slow, bleak somberness that will leave audiences wanting to give the filmmakers a pat on the back just to cheer them up. There's fires everywhere and plane crashes. They're calling it the surge. Director James Gray and his production designer Kevin Thompson have effectively constructed a lived-in near future, where moon bases look like chintzy airports, ray gun wielding moon gangs roam free across the lunar landscape in souped up moon buggies, and therapy has devolved into a series of frequent office-mandated visits to corny meditation rooms replete with relaxing images of butterflies and dreamy music from the hearts of space-style music. As best you can, please describe your current mental and emotional state. I'm feeling good ready to do my job to the best of my abilities. And the film's opening, wherein Roy falls from an impossibly high space tower, is a unique and exciting action sequence that might rival anything in Alfonso Cuaron's gravity for sheer nail-biting thrill. In the film's early scenes, Gray has never been so innervated, bringing a cultish energy for him to his sci-fi world that he's rarely employed in any of his previous films. But a sense of sorrowful grandeur eventually eclipses that energy. After an amazing mid-film sequence involving an abandoned spacecraft and, yes, an attack creature, the film slows to a sluggish contemplation of its own navel. The exploration of daddy issues floats right to the surface, as do a series of somewhat profound metaphors for God and meaning, or godlessness and meaninglessness. By the time Roy reaches the end of his journey and I will certainly not reveal where it ends or what he finds there, Ad Astra has been sleepwalking for nearly an hour. The world awaits our discovery, my son. It's difficult for a filmmaker to look into space and not feel a profound sense of the infinity of the cosmos, and some of the best films of all time have been about that very topic. And as with all filmmakers who feel equal to the task, you have to admire James Gray's willingness to dive headlong into the vast inky void. There is, at the very least, an intellectual boldness to asking these types of questions in a big-budget Hollywood blockbuster, one that aims to provoke more than it does to thrill. There is a hangdog solemnity undercutting the film's emotional impact, leaving one bummed out and tired rather than moved or intellectually stimulated. For more reviews, check out what we thought of Joker and The Lighthouse. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.